So, hello and welcome to Caboodle Textiles Sew Along Harem Trousers. This is the last video in the Sew Along series and we're going to construct the harem trousers together. They're really straightforward to do, but they teach you some great basic skills. If you're using a sewing machine instead of an overlocker, you'll want to watch Caboodle Textiles a guide to using stretch fabrics on a sewing machine which will tell you all the stitches that you need to use in order to get it right. The actual construction process is the same regardless of whether you're using an overlocker or a sewing machine, it's just a case of getting the correct needle and the correct foot and tension for your machine. So the first thing that you need to do is take some of your scraps and make sure that your overlocker is set up correctly for your fabric. The key thing is the differential feed um, and you may need to refer to your manual to work out where exactly the buttons are on your overlocker. This fabric is a really lovely uh, stretch cotton lycra from Caboodle Textiles and because it's really great stretch with great recovery, I need to increase my differential feed uh, and I'm using about 1.8, 1.7, 1.8 on my differential feed. When I threaded my overlocker, I threaded it with all of the settings on zero, but once it's threaded, then I need to increase it and I increase it to four on all, each of the four settings. I then run it through my test fabric and see what it looks like. There's a really uh, great guide on the Do It Better Yourself Club and I'll leave the link to this in the comments which helps you work out what settings are right for you. The loopers, which are the bits that go over the top of the fabric, should be snugly against where the fabric's been cut off. When you stretch the fabric from the other side, you shouldn't be able to see the thread poking through. If you can, then the left needle needs tightening. So I've needed to put my overlocker on five on the left needle, four and a half on the right needle, and then I've had to increase my loopers to uh, five and five. And that's given me a nice snug, uh, very stretchy, but not wavy uh, join for my fabric. In terms of constructing the harems themselves, this is really straightforward. You're going to take your back and your front, and both of those are going to be identical, and you're going to pin them right sides together. And for that, I normally use clips. So when you first start, you'll probably find that you need to use a lot of clips or pins, but as you get more experience, you'll be able to use fewer. The main things that are important is to put a clip at the beginning and at the end so that you uh, keep the trousers the correct length and as you're getting feeding the fabric through it's really important that you're not stretching it. So that's pinned all the way down the outside of the harem uh, and personally I find it easier to sew and then pin and then sew uh, and then pin rather than having clips everywhere. So this is a made by Jack's Mum pattern, which means you need um, a six millimeter uh, seam allowance and your overlocker should have markings on it uh, to uh, show where that, um, where, that, where that lies. And then chop this and you can just use a small tail because you're going to uh, have the uh, cuffs on uh, so they'll all get sewn in together and that's seam number one now I'm going to do the same on the other side so both of those side seams are now together so the next step is to clip 
uh, between the legs. So again, you're keeping the fabrics right side together and uh, you clip as many as you need to uh, to keep them on top of each other while you sew. Now, as you're sewing on an overlocker, it's a little bit different to a sewing machine in that as you're coming through you're sort of stretching very slightly the fabric to keep it in a straight line. As you get to the great curve in the middle you are going to need to slow down and potentially move your fabric slightly much more like you would if you were sewing on a sewing machine uh, but uh, you can get away because of the way the overlocker stitch is constructed with sort of doing quite a lot of uh, stretch and not having to make a curve and sew in a curve in quite the same way um, but you don't want to stretch it overly because that's when you'll get a wavy seam. So with an overlocker it's tempting to go really quickly but what I find is you're better to go slower and do it right than have to go really fast and then find that you've not been very tidy. And there you've got your harems. So we're going to turn them correct way uh, out. So cute. My niece is going to love them. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to sew cuffs. So on a sewing machine, you'll do this in the way that uh, Sarah's brilliant instructions show you, which is uh, to make a couple of um, seams. On an overlocker, there's a really nifty trick, and that is that you can put your material right sides together, first folding it along the stretchiest dimension, and then, folding in half again and sewing just along that seam there. Knot and trim the other end and then when you fold it through you find that you only have, then have one seam uh, for your uh, for your cuff so it's automatically kind of made for you what you're going to then do is right sides together get the seam of your cuff to line up with the seam of the inside of the trousers that's just convention uh, it looks a bit smarter too and you're going to line up all three layers two layers of ribbing and your jersey fabric all together. So lining up your seams, I put one clip there and then directly opposite you've got the seam of the harems and then you're going to make sure you're directly opposite on your cuff and you're going to pin those all together. And the direction of your seam should all be facing towards the back of your trousers. Now harems are symmetrical so you don't have to decide which is the back quite yet. Um, you can do that when you put your waistband on. So I'm just going to sew that now. So to begin with, I'm going to sew all the way around, making sure I'm not stretching my jersey trouser leg and I'm only stretching my ribbing. This chunky ribbing from Caboodle Textiles is really, really great quality. It's got loads of stretch to it, so it's really easy uh, to make it all fit where it's supposed to. Again, take it slowly, there's no prizes for being the fastest uh, sewist, 
and you'll save lots of time by not having to repeat things for make, having made mistakes with them. So keeping all your layers together. And you're maintaining your six millimetre seam allowance. And then once you round to the beginning, what you're going to do, or what I do, is disengage my knife. Some overlockers have a button to do this. Uh, mine have to manually move the knife out of the way. And then I'm going to sew over where I first started, uh, including over the original tail that I made. And then I'm going to go off in a straight line. And unlike all my other points, I'm going to leave a long tail here because I use a darning needle uh, to bury that. I'm just going to trim the rest of the tail that I've overlapped from the beginning bit. And that gives me a really strong, neat cuff that when you flip the other side, looks great. So with the high kick harems, you've also got the piece of elastic that you've measured to the length and the chart on the pattern and you sew it together on your sewing machine uh, with a stretch stitch. So for me, uh, I use a jersey needle uh, and I use the uh, three piece uh, zigzag um, and I go back and forward over that a couple of times to make sure it's super strong and it's not going to ping open. Okay. Uh, once you've got that ring, uh, depending on how fierce your overlocker or your sewing machine is, uh, you're going to uh, push that within the within the ribbing. And you can uh, sew so that you pick up the elastic as well, or I use a slightly narrower uh, elastic as suggested in the pattern uh, so that uh, my machine doesn't have to do quite as many layers. So you quarter uh, your, you want your quartered waistband and uh, your uh, quartered uh, harem trousers. So quarter your waistband and quarter your harem trousers. So you've got your side seams at two and then I use a label to identify the back. Um, because my kid finds it really frustrating not knowing what way is the back or the front. I appreciate with harems you could wear them either way and it wouldn't matter, uh, but um, we're very conventional in my house. So with the outside of the waistband against the outside of uh, your harem prep pants, um, you're going to match up each of the four quarters with with all of your layers. And most people would do um, just four uh, clips or pins through this, uh, but if you're a beginner, you might want to use a few extra. Um, it's okay. I've known people tell me that they use up to 16 and just keep dividing and dividing and dividing each section. And that's fine. You just need to do what works for you. So again, as you're sewing, you want to make sure that you've got every layer included because that's the most common mistake. And uh, you want to take it steady because it's much easier to sew slowly than it is to unpick. You want to also make sure you're only stretching your ribbing and your elastic. You're not stretching uh, the material of your harem trousers. Once you've done this, you're going to use a really hot steamy iron uh, to press your steams so that any waviness that you've got from your stitching uh, is going to be sorted out. So you normally start sewing at the back of your garment or at the side seam, uh, it doesn't really matter. 
but uh, not right in the front at the middle because that's um, potentially going to be uh, more noticeable. So then again, I'm going to use a darning needle to just thread these uh, through and underneath. There are ways in which you can uh, sew back over your tails, you can knot your tails and trim them. And then it all needs a really, really good press to uh, get rid of any, any waviness. And that's going to be a super comfy uh, waistband that fits my niece exactly. So here we go. One pair of high kick car rooms needing an iron. <laughs>